Hi, I'm Joan Newcomb, and today's Morning Musings is New Death Experiences. I'm doing a series of daily morning musings, and I'm using posts on my blog, Adventures in Density and Effort, as inspiration. Now, I wrote these a while ago, and the world has completely changed since then. So if I encounter anything that is out of date, I will give you the most recent information. And at the end, I will summarize the topic based on what's going on in the world today. Also, I have some special offers, so stay tuned to the very end to see what they are. New Death Experiences. I've written about my experience with a friend who died and what I've learned from him since he passed. He's still very present, just more diffuse. He shows up when I think of him, but he also pops up at the unexpected times and usually symbolized by a silver PT cruiser, the vehicle that hit him when he was riding his bike. This last week, I did an energy session for someone who is dying. It was very interesting and I learned some new things. I always thought that the energy of death is identical to the energy of birth. I had both my kids at home without medication, and I can attest to how powerful that energy is as an infinite being comes into form. It's love embodied. When you have kids, it opens your heart and you feel that love so purely in a way that's not possible without them. When my friend died, I remember feeling that love. It felt like the essence of what anyone wants in a relationship, which can be impossible because of all the twists and turns of personality and history. With the person who was dying, I looked at their process of leaving. It is birthing back to the infinite. Rather than squeezing into form, they're expanding into the all that is. It looks ecstatic. Intellectually, I already knew that. But before seeing it in last week's session, I never quite realized or understood it before. The other thing I saw was that the remaining time gave them the opportunity to hang out with friends and loved ones in body. But it was for the friends and loved ones' sake. They're the ones that are going to feel the loss. They're going to think this person is gone when their body has died. In actuality, they're expanding. They're getting bigger. They're not going to feel any loss. They're going to feel everything, not just a part of everything, but become everything, which doesn't mean that they're a drop of water disappearing into an ocean. My sense with my dead friend is that they're still there, but it's my awareness that concentrates them into moments. Communication is still possible. It's just different. I like to say that it's like a bad cell phone connection. They're easier to talk to because the personality barriers are gone, but they're harder to hear because of our expectations. We think we should hear their voice or receive full sentences. Without a body, you impart and receive feelings and impressions. I also looked at someone with Alzheimer's further along than my mother's. Energetically, the body personality was collapsing over them, like the empty shell a caterpillar leaves behind. It's organic matter, but the light is gone. The dying person had their own body personality collapsing, but their light was concentrated deep within it. It helped me understand my mother's process, whose light is still very present, but the body personality programs are running strongly at times without the controls. It helped me understand our death process, our light birthing back to source. Anyone who's ever birthed and raised an infant knows that it's not oh coos and cuddles. Creating a body, then learning to roll over, crawl, and walk causes sleepless nights and frustrations. Leaving a body, the body breaking down so it can't walk and eventually can't roll over, is also sleepless nights and frustration. Leaving is a painful process on the physical level, but from the perspective of consciousness, it's as exciting as birth. Rather than infinite squeezing into a little form, it's the opposite. Expansion times infinity equals joy. You can't see that without being awed. People dying, people who've died, should be celebrated. They've moved into something wonderful, and if we could only understand that they're not gone, that they're more here than ever, we'd be happy for them, and our hearts could be filled with with love. I'll have to say I had a flash with this, which was a flash of neutrality that whether someone is alive or not alive makes no real difference, except it does to those of us that are in form and that are continuing on in form because then we're missing the physical presence. I often think of the questions or things I should have asked my mother and probably should have asked her when her memory was better that I'll never get the answers to now. So when it's framed in that kind of perspective, that's where it's painful and difficult. And because, yeah, I can contact my mother now but I'm not going to get the answer to some specific things because that's not how I receive the communication. And also I was thinking about some people I know who are having a difficult time and are having some really serious health challenges. And I had the neutral experience about, you know, whether they overcome those challenges and continue on to have a full and happy life or these health challenges takes them out at this time. And from the perspective of consciousness, it's really neutral because knowing that they'll 
go on to experience expansiveness and love. But I like to think of life as a swim time at your local pool. And this is the time to jump in and splash and paddle around or do your laps or any of those things. And why would you get out before swim time is over? So this is the time to really experience enjoying being in a body and all the wonderful, fun, physical things we can do in a body and have in a body and interact with others who are in body. And then when it's time to get out of the pool and dry off and go back into that amazing expansiveness, we'll realize that we all are greater consciousness and life continues. So if you like these videos, please click the like button and subscribe. And that way you're telling YouTube to share this far and wide and get this out to someone who really needs to see this information. And also you can share this with your family and friends and on your social media as well. And if you'd like a free sample of one of my consciousness techniques, click on the link below to the Skybox technique and it'll give you a way to have a greater perspective of your life from the viewpoint of consciousness. And if you want some manifestation techniques, Manifesting Money and Miracles is my self-study course where you learn how to work with frequencies that can totally rearrange your external reality. And if you want to know more, my website is joan-newcomb.com. There you can learn about my individual sessions where I take a look at you as consciousness and everything that's going on in your life today. And I can answer any questions that you might have, whether it's about relationships or your job, where you live, what's coming up in your future. And I can also talk to your deceased loved ones. And it's all recorded just for you. And if you want to learn how to do this for yourself, and that is learn to navigate as consciousness with the help of some consciousness techniques. Manifesting Money and Miracles is a great preparation for my coaching special, where I work with you one-on-one -on -one and give you specifically chosen consciousness techniques so that you can transform your life. So go to my website, joan-newcomb.com, and I'll see you tomorrow in another Morning Musings.